The joint is subjected to a force of F and P. Determine state of stress at points A and B, as shown here. The member has a rectangular cross-sectional area of width of 50 mm and a thickness of 20 mm. The other parameters are A is 30 cm, B is 8 cm, the magnitude of P is 300 Newton, and F is 120 Newton. This is what we have called combined loading in the chapter number 5. So we have introduced that, but I would like to review the concept again and extend this concept into three-dimensional problems. The first step would be determining the internal forces at the cut section. So we need to cut the section passing through the point of interest and move all the forces to that cut section and determine how much are the forces at that section. To do that, I'm going to cut the section as shown here. In general, in two-dimensional plane, we have three forces, axial force, shear force, and bending moment, as shown here. To determine the forces at the cut section easier, I would usually use a table as shown here. So at the cut section, there will be three forces, Vf, Y, Vx, and M in this case. And I will move all forces one by one to that cut section. Let's move force P. There should be two moves. One move would be in the horizontal direction. Another move would be in the vertical direction. When I move force P in the horizontal direction, is there any moment caused by that? Yes, there will be a moment. How much is the magnitude of that moment? The moment would be force times the arm, the distance of this force from this axis, which is B. Okay? So the moment is P times B. And is it clockwise or counterclockwise? We can use the right hand rule. Put the fingers in the direction of the force bend your fingers toward the direction that the force moves, toward the cut section. The thumb shows the direction of the moment. This is how we use the right hand rule. Okay? If I do that, my fingers are bending counterclockwise and the thumb goes out of the plane. So this is how we can determine the direction of the moment. The second move would be moving P all the way up to the cut section. Is there any moment caused by that? There's not any moment. Once this force arrives to that cut section, what kind of force is that? Is it shear force or it's axial force? Axial force. Okay, so now I will write down the effect of that P for each of these three components. If in the Y direction the axial force is P, there is not any shear force, and the moment is negative P times B. I assumed here that the counterclockwise is negative. Now let's do the same for force F. For force F, the, again, there would be two moves, moving that along its axis and then all the way up to the cut section. The first move doesn't cause any moment, does it? Because it's moving along its axis. The second move, however, causes a moment. And that moment would be equal to F times perpendicular distance of this force to the cut section which is A. And is that clockwise or counterclockwise? Use the right hand rule. The fingers are bending clockwise. So here that would be positive. Once this force arrives to the cut section, what kind of force is that? Is it shear or axial? Shear. So there is not any axial force component because of F. The shear force would be equal to that F. And moment would be F times A. Now, I can write down the total forces. The total axial force is P plus 0. So that would be P. P is, in this case, is 300 Newton. Total shear force is F, which is 120 Newton. And the total bending moment is negative PB plus FA. And if I plug the values, that gives me positive 33,600 newton millimeter. So that's it. The first step is determining all forces at the cut section. Now let me go to the second step. In the second step, we need to determine the stresses caused by each of these forces. The stress caused by the axial force 
is simply force over area. We have determined force before. We need to determine area here. Area is the area of that cut section. Let me show it here. If this is the cut section, if we look at that from the bottom, the thickness of that is 20 millimeter. The height of that is 50 millimeter. How much is the cross section area of that? Cross section would be 20 times 50, which is 1000 millimeter. Okay, so we need to determine section properties before determining stresses. The stress caused by that axial force is F over A. Force is 300 newton, and area, as we discussed, is 20 times 50. And if I plug the value, that gives me 0.3 megapascal. And that would be tension because of the direction of the applied force. This stress is uniformly distributed in the cut section, as shown here. Point 0.3 everywhere in that cut section, either at point B, point A, or any other point in that cut section. Now, let's determine stresses caused by the bending moment. First, this moment acts about z-axis or x-axis in this figure. Use the right-hand rule. What is the direction of the thumb? It's along the z-axis, okay? So that is the axis that gets the moment. For determining a stress, our sigma is m y over i. The moment is calculated as 33,600 33, newton millimeter. How much is i? i is base height cubed over 12 because that's a rectangular section. What is base and what is height? How can I determine base and height here? Remember this again. The base is parallel to the axis of interest and the height is perpendicular to that. So the axis of interest, the axis that the moment is acting about is the z-axis. So the base would be 20 millimeter and the height would be 50 millimeter. So if I plug the values over here, that gives me I equal to 33,300 millimeter to the fourth. Now the last part, what is Y here? Y depends on the point at which you wanna determine stress. At A is zero, because distance of point A from the axis of interest is zero. And how much would be Y for B? For B would be 10. So for the sigma A, stress is simply zero. And for sigma B, everything is the same. Moment and I are the same. The only parameter that changes over here is Y, which would be 10. And if I plug the values, that gives me negative 10.1 megapascal. By the way, how did I know that this is negative? Look at the direction of the moment. The moment is positive, which means it is clockwise. And the clockwise moment causes stress on the left side as compression and on the right side as tension. And we know that stresses along the axis of interest is zero. Let me determine the stresses caused by the shear force. I will consider the same cut section. If I look at that from the bottom, I would see this rectangular section. The shear force is in the horizontal direction, which is along the x-axis. Tau is VQ over IT. We have determined I before. We need to have determined V. We need to determine Q and T. Okay? Let's do that for point A first. How can I calculate Q for that point? What is the axis of interest here? The axis of interest here, again, is Z. It is not X. We need to cut this section parallel to that axis passing through point A, like this, and calculate Q for this hatched section. Q is area of that hatched section times distance of its centroid to the centroid of the entire section. How much is the area of that hatched section? It's 50 times 10. And how much is distance of its centroid to the centroid of the entire section? It's 5. So Q would be 50 times 10 times 5, and that gives me 2,500 millimeter cubed. What would be the thickness for calculating the shear stress for that problem? The thickness is, is the thickness of that cut section. So look at this. We cut the section like that vertically. So the thickness would be 50 millimeter. We are ready to plug the values into that stress equation. So shear stress at that point is V multiplied by Q divided by I T. And that gives us 0.18 megapascal. This is the magnitude of shear stress 
developed at that cut section. Now, you tell me how much is the magnitude of shear stress developed at point B. For that point, how much is I? I is the same. How much is T? T is the same. How much is V? Same. How much is Q? Q is zero in this case. Why? Because if I cut that vertically passing through point B, that gives me zero area and that gives me zero Q. So, tau at B is zero. All right? By the way, the shear stress is maximum at the centroid and zero on the left and on the right of that. This is what we have learned before. Let's draw the stress element at point A and B. First, let me take out this cube at A. If I take it out, I would see this shape. The normal stress was acting on the green surface. Look at this. These normal stresses, both of them, the normal stress caused by the axial force and the normal stress caused by the bending, they are all acting on the cut section, which is shown here by the green surface. So, we add them together. The normal stress caused by the axial force is positive 0.3, the normal stress caused by the bending stress at A is 0. So if I add them together, that would be 0.3. And how much is the shear stress at that point? Shear stress is 0.18 megapascal. That is three-dimensional stress element for that point. If I look at that from that purple side, we would see this two-dimensional stress element. 0.3 megapascal in the vertical direction and 0.18 megapascal as shear. What would be the stress element for point B? At that point, there are two normal stresses. The normal stress caused by the axial force is positive. The normal stress caused by the bending moment is negative. So here, I need to subtract them from each other. In this case, that would be 9.8 with the negative sign and the shear stress is zero. And if I look at that from two-dimensional viewpoint, that would be the stress element. Okay? All right. This was an easy problem because we were working with two-dimensional case. The reason that this part is a bit complicated is, we need, is that we need to deal with three-dimensional cases. But before talking about three-dimensional cases, let me, let me review the concepts that we talked about here, then we will extend that concept into more complicated cases. All right? Solving combined loading problems has three main steps. In the first step, as we discussed, we need to move all forces to the centroid of the cut section. Note that I underlined that centroid because we need to move that to the centroid. It does not depend on where is the point of interest. There are three rules. First, moving moment is not causing any extra moment. But if we have a force, moving a force may cause a moment. Assume that we have this figure. If we move the force along its axis, there is not any extra moment, but if we move that perpendicular to its axis, there will be extra moment, which is the magnitude of that is force times distance, in this case is A, as shown in this figure. Direction of that is calculated using the right-hand rule. I would like to highlight that we have to move all forces to the centroid of the cut section. In the second step, we determine section properties. Section properties that we are interested in includes area or A, moment of inertia or I, moment of area or Q, or polar moment of inertia or J. Uh, there are tricks about how to calculate them. I will talk about that later in the next page. And in the third step, we determine the stresses caused by each of these forces one by one. Basically, there are three sorts of forces. Axial force, as shown in this figure, causes normal stress. The equation that is used for determining that stress is F over A. The second type of force is shear force. Shear force causes shear stress. And the magnitude of that is calculated from this equation, VQ over IT. The third type of force is bending moment. This bending moment causes normal stress which is calculated from this equation, mc over i. And finally, we might have torsion in our problem, which causes shear stress. An example is presented in the next video in which we use these three steps to solve a three-dimensional combined loading problem. 
But before watching that video, I would recommend you to try to solve the first step of that problem, which is moving all forces to the centroid and determining how much are the forces at the cut section. Look at this problem. A cantilever beam is subjected to three loads. Loads along the x-axis is 37 kips. Load along the y-axis is 23 kips. And load along the z-axis is 19 kips. The beam has a rectangular cross-section with a width of 9 inch and a height of 4 inch. And you would like to determine the stresses developed at point K, which is located on the right part of that cantilever beam, close to the restraint. The first step for solving this problem, as we discussed, is determining all the forces at the cut section, the section that passes through the point K. Generally, these forces in three-dimensional problems are causing six sort of forces at the cut section. One axial force, two shear forces, one torque and two bending moments. In this case, the force along the z-axis would be an axial force, the forces along the x and y-axis would be shear forces, the moment about the z-axis would be a torque, and the moment about the x and y-axis would be bending moments. Go ahead and determine how much are these six forces and moments at the cut section of this problem. In the next part, we present the solution of this problem, but it's better to give it a try before looking at the solution.